Hello and welcome to today's uh, sales enablement training. Uh, today we will be going through a deep dive on uh, GitLab Ultimate, showing uh, several of the resources that we have to empower you to position this, who are we selling to, what is the value, and what positioning uh, and materials do we have <coughs> to help you sell GitLab Ultimate. Uh, of course, all of the content that I will be presenting today is publicly available on our website and easily uh, searchable and consumable. In addition to all of that, when we upload this video to YouTube, I will put links to every website that I reference in the description of the YouTube video. So with that, uh, let me uh, share my screen and go through a few pages. So the first resource to take a look at, of course, is our pricing page. Um, so to start from square one, of course, we have uh, three tiers of paid GitLab in addition to our uh, core version, which is open source. So today we are talking specifically about our self-managed quote unquote on-prem uh, version of GitLab that you can install and run uh, either in your own data center or on your own uh, cloud infrastructure that, that you uh, control as opposed to GitLab.com, which is our, our SaaS offering and is managed by GitLab. So in our self-managed GitLab, you download, you install it, and we have uh, open source core, which is our, uh, the open source version of our software, the open source distribution of our software, and uh, starter premium and ultimate as our paid tiers. So just looking right here at the page, first uh, we would look at who these various tiers are positioned to and uh, who is the buyer and what is the, the value uh, that we're presenting here. So you can see that with Starter, we're talking about enabling teams uh, to speed up DevOps delivery and automation. Um, so this is, you know, this is uh, aimed at teams, this type of plan, uh, looking to speed up DevOps. Uh, our premium tier is enabling IT to scale DevOps delivery. So now we're not just aiming at tiers, but really uh, organizations. Uh, and, you know, obviously not just IT, but, you know, product organizations and technology organizations as, uh, as software becomes more and more important to the entire organization. But, you know, this is about scaling that delivery. And then really ultimate is, is targeted at an entire organization or across organizations in the enterprise, uh, where here we're enabling leaders to transform their business. So the value here is really when we're saying GitLab can be a strategic partner for your business in order to drive your digital transformation in order to achieve business outcomes. And so at this point, we're not just talking about, yes, we can help you adopt DevOps. Uh, yes, we can help you scale your DevOps but ultimate is about optimizing and accelerating your DevOps. Uh, and so that is the, the value proposition at the highest level. You can see also on the pricing page, we list some of the capabilities that ultimate has that none of the other plans have. And so we'll dig into this a little bit more through uh, out the rest of the training. I have some other links to share, uh, but just to note that for example, these all, uh, our, our links out to, so for example, what is uh, epics and, and how does that work? Uh, of course, it links out to the docs to tell you um, more about that particular capability. The other uh, functionality that I wanna share here is that you can click on see all features and see a, a feature by feature or capability by capability comparison of what exactly is in, you know, in core, what exactly is in premium, and what is only an ultimate. So as you continue down the list, you start to see that it, the, the capabilities become more exclusive. So uh, what is only, only available in ultimate, things like container scanning, uh, Kubernetes cluster monitoring, which I'll chat more about in a moment. But I just wanted to show that this page is designed uh, not only for web visitors who, who show up to our website and want to consume this information, but uh, also specifically designed as an enablement tool uh, 
uh, for our direct and channel sales to, uh, to use in their efforts and to share with prospects. Uh, so a new piece of content that this is kind of should be for a review for most folks, but uh, catching newer folks up to speed is we've actually added a, an ultimate value page. And so if you click on this link here, we've added a bit of a deep dive. And this is what I want to jump into in a moment. But I just wanted to show that we are always updating, always adding more content. And uh, John drafted this content. A, a little, few of us helped, but this is predominantly uh, an effort he put forward. And I, I think it's a great effort. So I'll jump back to this content. But I wanted to show that that's a, a new link that we've added that you may not have seen. And it's accessible right there from the pricing page. So before we jump into that value, uh, it is worth going over to the handbook. And so this is the pricing page in the handbook. If you search through the handbook, you can find the pricing page. And this will tell you at a high level, um, you know, it, it, this is the why we do what we do. And so this is not necessarily a page that you would share with prospects where the, the, the pricing page or the content on it, you may share with prospects. This is more for your own information to kind of understand the, the strategy, why we price what we price. Uh, there's a link here to understand how we decide what goes in wh which version. But what I wanna point out here is who the buyer is that we're targeting. And this is an alignment with the messaging that you see on the website. Uh, of course, we can go to the pricing page. Uh, this is an alignment with the messaging you can see on the website and uh, how you who you should be targeting and how you should be positioning ultimate. Um, so for example, as we mentioned starter, the target there is teams, the, the buyer persona would be someone like an engineering lead or a team lead, engineering manager, product manager. Uh, as you move to uh, premium, where we're talking about scaling um, for across teams, that here we're looking at somebody would be like a director of DevOps or director of IT who uh, owns tools and services for an organization. Of course, at Ultimate, we are targeting uh, the C-suite and in particular, the chief architect. Uh, so the chief architect is a, is a key persona for us. And this is somebody who cares about uh, solving strategic challenges for their organization. So they don't necessarily care about buying tools in particular, but they do care about the problems that their organization is gonna encounter uh, if their tool chain is not meeting their needs. And so for example, uh, whenever I've chatted with a chief architect, uh, they always talk about our tool chain problem. This is our core value proposition of GitLab, is that with other tools, you need to integrate so many different things. Uh, of course, that slows you down. It causes silos, which DevOps is supposed to break down silos, but by, by implementing different tools and different tool chains, uh, different tools into a tool chain, you're creating more silos. Um, and so the chief architect wants to see the organization accelerate their pace, breaks down silos. And in particular, they want to they wanna ship more reliably. So um, speed is not always the thing they care about the most, uh, but they care about reliability and predictability. Uh, and so that is the persona that we're targeting for uh, our ultimate plan in particular, because they can make these strategic decisions across an organization. Um, so there's the pricing page. Let's uh, take a look at this page here, the ultimate value page, which is, uh, like I said, linked off of our pricing page. So uh, for GitLab Ultimate, this is where we've covered, uh, we're talking about IT transformation, or really talking about even broader than IT, just a business digital transformation. And what th this, I, I think, is just the key phrase here, that um, you want high velocity delivery, but without sacrificing security or compliance or enterprise governance. Um, and so this is, the, this is the, the position of ultimate, what is, um, you know, what we're saying in this plan, we want to give you high velocity, we want to give you agility with resiliency. So you are able to increase the pace at what you're doing, but you're able to do so in a predictable manner uh, and one that's reliable. So in particular, there are some capabilities of GitLab Ultimate that are, are unique and are going to uh, help address this problem. So the first, of course, is portfolio management. 
And with portfolio management, the key here is that uh, we're often hearing from customers that um, when they're a chief architect or if they're in the C-suite or if they're a, a VP and they're higher in the org, they don't necessarily have a view into how their strategic decisions are being implemented. Uh, are, they, are they on time? Are they not on time? How is the strategy actually being executed? And so in order to marry that strategy and that execution, this is where uh, GitLab uh, is developing and has developed portfolio management. So you can see today, uh, features like epics and roadmaps are unique to Ultimate and are those types of visualization tools that allow a higher level view to say, is something on track or not? Um, and uh, how is this affecting the, the game plan? And in particular, what is unique about GitLab, because we, we own, uh, I say we own it end to end, uh, or because we're, we're able to drive the entire DevOps lifecycle uh, and not just a part of it, is from that high level roadmap, you can actually go from that epic to click into an actual issue, which is tied to the merge request, which is tied to the code. And so you, you have a, a marriage of the strategic uh, plan together with how it's being, ex you know, the execution plan together with the actual execution, the actual code that ships. So that end-to-end -end traceability is extremely unique. Every other tool on the planet can only get there by patchworking a series of APIs and integrations into uh, several other tools. Um, and so the fact that we have that type of end-to-end -end traceability and the potential to have even deeper traceability there across the stack is really powerful selling feature. So for organizations that want this type of visibility, Ultimate can provide great value to them. You can see, of course, uh, there's even more on the roadmap, uh, more capabilities like VSM workflow, risk management, uh, what if scenario planning and roadmap capacity planning uh, that will further bolster this offering. Um, and I want to jump back to, to roadmap in, in a little bit. Want to cover just a few more of the capabilities on this page, uh, and, but then talk specifically about the difference between what's available now and roadmap and how to position that. Uh, so where I, I believe we've seen the most success uh, selling GitLab Ultimate, what I continually hear um, on our sales calls um, and in my conversations with sales uh, team members is that the, the security functionality of Ultimate um, has been the, um, the most compelling part. So there's a, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of functionality in here. There's even more coming. Uh, but I really believe that the security capabilities are, are a shining star in this mix. Um, and what's, what's so unique here, again, is it's not just that we have the security capabilities, because anybody can go and build a security tool, but it's the fact that these security capabilities are integrated into the complete DevOps lifecycle in one application. So the, the single application value prop, it's how we position GitLab. Um, it's important in our lower tiers. You know, for example, you know, uh, a team lead you know, that wants to you know, buy starter and they're like, they want to do some issue tracking and they want to do some source code management and they want to do a little bit of CI. That's, that's pretty valuable for them to have all those tools together in a single application. But when you're talking about a chief architect or, or a leader of an organization trying to drive digital transformation, uh, the value prop here of being able to have uh, security built in, designed from the ground up as a part of that single application is so compelling and so unique. We can do things that nobody else can do. And the, the radically popular way to talk about security within the DevOps world is to say, we're looking to shift left security. Of course, the, the traditional uh, method of doing this is to run your code through the, the entire stack, and then at the end, you do all your security checks. And of course, this is slow because the security compliance team comes in and says, you've mixed X, Y, or Z. Um, it's almost like the develop job is to ship code, and the security's job is to say, to stop the code from getting shipped. Um, and so, Every DevOps tool out there talks about shifting left. So this is not unique to us. Everybody talks about shift left that security, get it earlier in the stack. But only GitLab has it as a built-in uh, 
design from the ground up part of the application. And so even though today uh, our security capabilities, we may not fully replace another security tool, but we can do it earlier in the cycle and we can do it in an integrated way. Um, and so what is powerful here is uh, not only being able to do it earlier to run on every merge request, but also some of the pricing models. So um, for example, other security tools, they may bill on uh, per line of code. And so it becomes extremely cost prohibitive to really run on every single commit. And so you have to architect you know, your whole system to only send certain things off to your security tool because of the, the very nature of the pricing model. Of course, with GitLab, this is the high value. So this is, you know, this comes back to like an ROI conversation. If you can look at, um, you know, even if you don't replace that tool, right? Even if they keep that existing security tool and it's costing them X amount of dollars to run their code, if they can offload that to GitLab, that's instant ROI. And then additionally, even if they use them both in concert, even without even offloading any workloads from their existing security tool, they're just running GitLab more often on more code. So they are shifting left and finding it earlier in their cycle. That is uh, what you would call a soft ROI, but it is extremely valuable, right? What would, what would be the value of that business to eliminate that risk earlier in the cycle? So uh, we could probably do a whole training or 10 trainings on this. Uh, I can let Cindy uh, speak to it in the future. She's much more uh, eloquent than I am uh, on our security capabilities, but something that excites me and wanted to dig in there for a moment. Um, compliance is a key part of Ultimate. Again, when we're talking about uh, transformation, when we're talking about uh, the value we can bring for an entire organization, uh, compliance is key. It's not just about shifting faster. Uh, often, the larger of an organization you are pitching to, the less they care about going fast and the more they care about predictability and um, being able to measure their costs. So they certainly want to accelerate, uh, but they want to do so in a way that uh, eliminates risk as well, because the, the bigger of an organization they are, the greater risk they take on uh, by iterating. And so the ability to do license management today built in to GitLab, uh, is key for that type of compliance. And then of course we have other uh, roadmap features with uh, SOC 2 compliance for continuous delivery uh, on the roadmap. The last one I wanna dig in here is in our, in our operations stack. And the, the key here is that GitLab assumes Kubernetes as the operations model. Again, this is, this is uh, fairly unique in the space. Uh, there are a lot of Kubernetes tools. The you know, Kubernetes tools have, have popped up all over the place, but in terms of the traditional tools that the enterprise uses, in terms of the traditional DevOps tools, they are not designed for Kubernetes, and they're actually quite slow to be able to adopt this and uptake this. Uh, an example of this is, is Jenkins. Jenkins just put out a blog post from their CTO saying, we basically, we need to get rid of Jenkins because we don't know what to do. And we're going to have uh, the Jenkins that you're using today, we're, we're, we just need to get rid of that. And we need to come up with two new different types of Jenkins. They've got Jenkins X and Jenkins Evergreen, and neither one of those is traditional Jenkins. Now, why are they doing this? Why are they in such like uh, product disarray? I don't want to be too harsh on them, but uh, the reason they're in product disarray is because they're not designed for Kubernetes, and GitLab is. Uh, GitLab is the easiest way to build cloud native applications, hands down. Not only uh, can you run your entire DevOps lifecycle inside of GitLab, but it is the way to do cloud native. So not just digital transformation from legacy to agile, not just from agile to DevOps, but from DevOps to cloud native. GitLab is your strategic partner now and in the future as you adopt future technologies. This is where we're really strong. Um, and this type of key functionality, things like Kubernetes cluster health monitoring. Uh, this is something that GitLab does really, really well. And it's built in and it comes out of the stack, uh, the ability to, to see the health of your Kubernetes cluster. And this is important. I'll give you an example. 
uh, for example, if you are monitoring the difference between your canary deploy and your production deploy, and you want to see how that affects the performance of your cluster before you ship to prod, that type of monitoring capabilities is out of the box and really simple and easy to use in GitLab. Uh, whereas with other traditional monitoring tools, that's pretty hard or they're not even designed for it. So again, this is a, this is a place where somebody may keep their existing monitoring stack but, um, it, and use it in concert with GitLab, but GitLab is going to provide this type of value um, that, that those other tools can't in this unique way. Um, these are the things we're doubling down on. So I do want to leave a little bit of time for questions, but I want to jump to one last thing on the recording uh, before we jump there. So that is on the product marketing page. Uh, we have resources for you. And one of those, uh, sorry, this is product marketing page in our handbook. Uh, and of course, one of those resources are our marketing decks, and in particular, the pitch deck. Um, so this is something that is publicly accessible. Uh, all, of our, all of our channel and all of our internal team should be able to access this page and this deck. There are two slides in particular that I want to hone in on, on pitching ultimate value. Uh, so the first one, of course, is the, uh, uh, obviously the whole pitch deck talks about GitLab's value as a, as a single tool for the entire DevOps lifecycle. But in particular, we do have uh, essentially for your convenience, a feature alignment slide uh, that is in the pitch deck. So while you're presenting, you can show a summary uh, essentially of this exact page where we have CL features. Or you can do what I like to do and uh, present the website instead of the pitch deck. Um, could potentially do that. Uh, but this slide is there for your use. The key one though, I believe to selling ultimate, the key slide in the pitch deck is this one. And the, and the reason why is because when you go to a prospect and you say, look, we have this functionality today and we think it's compelling, but we wanna be a strategic partner, not just a vendor, we wanna be a strategic partner to drive and empower your digital transformation. Uh, and we think we can do it not only, not only because of what we have today, but look at what's to come. And they're gonna say, ah, what's to come, futures, promises, like we don't know when that's ever gonna ship. Um, you know, that's a bunch of BS. And what you can say is you can say, hey, don't take my word for it. Look at GitLab's track record. GitLab has a track record of delivering functionality. If you just look at this timeline, uh, there, was a, there was a report done of all of the open source tools, and GitLab was one of the top 30 highest velocity open source tools on the planet. And in fact, if you dug into that report, not only the top 30, we were in the top 10. And this was with tools, things like Kubernetes itself, or like Node.js, um, these massive projects. We were, we were shipping as fast as those, some of the fastest projects on the planet. We literally are one of the fastest projects on the planet. And so if you look at this slide and you say, look, look at our track record of shipping. You know, around uh, 2013, 2014, we didn't even have integrated CI yet, right? And now we have, uh, now we have the, the, the best CI, according to Forrester. So this is a key uh, slide here to show our product velocity and uh, in terms of pitching ultimate. So... Uh, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I have uh, talked for far too long. Uh, thank you to everyone on YouTube. I'm going to pause the recording and go to Q&A. Uh.